All right, let's uh, let's do this okay. thing. All right, what's first? We've got two inky watts. So these are like wide hats from Pimeroni. Um, they have these really great ink, like fat, little mini bonnet, small things, 2.3, 1, 3 inch. These are the 4.3 inch displays. They're more expensive, but they're huge. 400 by 300 pixels. We have them in two styles. You can get them black and white, a little bit less expensive because you're only having one color. and. Yeah red, white, and black. So Let's have it beam in. Boop, 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 boop. This is showing you the process just because people um, might be curious what does it look like as it's changing images. It's not like a Kindle where it's like instant update. Um, these are kind of like more passive type displays. So they take like up to 20 seconds to change the image. Um, so that's good for you to know that um, though it's e-ink, uh, and most people are used to e-paper displays that mm. update fast, this isn't one of them. You kind of set the display and maybe you don't change it for a couple minutes. It's another thing. These displays don't like to be changed a ton. So uh, maybe every five minutes or ten minutes is probably the max you want to do it. And this is what it looks like with the red ink. So you get red, white, or black. You can't mix the... So it's like three colors because like the red and black don't mix. And then use Python code. Plus, the Raspberry Pi has these cool SMT nuts that you can uh, bolt it onto the back of the Raspberry Pi. Maybe I'll show it really fast just to... Uh, yeah show the process so this is a raspberry pi 3 and it comes with bolts you bolt it in place and then um you know you have this display and then of course because it's e-ink um if you have your pi on a um you know a real-time clock or power supply system that disables it you know you can have the pi turn off the screen stays on doesn't it be good if you have like yeah some sort of power cycle thing where this turns on once an hour updates a calendar or updates a display and then goes back to sleep um, the e-ink display will stay on even when it's off. Okay. Next up. We've got two more Charlie Plex bonnets. Uh, this is the 8x16 version of our Charlie Plex wing, our Charlie Plex breakout. Now in happy bonnet shape. Uh, they're like all assembled, ready to plug in and go. We have them in yellow and white now. We've also had them in warm white, green, and blue. Red we haven't quite gotten to yet, but we'll maybe get to that later. Uh, so you get 8x16 uh, LEDs, one color each, but you can PWM them up to 8 bits. So you can, you can see, if you saw the animation, um, you can see the gradients of, of, of brightness. So that's kind of cool. It's all multiplexed. And it's all over I2C. So it's very easy to use, and we have a Python library for it as well. Okay, next up, we've got the Mini Moo Gloss. This is a um, project by Helen Lay. Uh, Pimeroni and Imogen Heap, who is a artist musician who uses um, gloves to make music. And if you've ever seen her uh, uh, Moogle, I can't remember, was it? it's, it's like Imogmoo or something, it's the name of her gloves. They're kind of advanced and complicated and use Bluetooth and they communicate with a computer. This is a simplified version uh, for the micro bit that you don't need to see any soldering. Um, I'll show you the overhead. So, you get it as felt that you then sew together. Um, so you do need to have a little bit of sewing skills. Um, and the, the, the felt does have uh, a guide, so you can cut it according to the guide. It has alligator clips, a speaker. Um, here's a micro bit, which tucks into this pocket. And then over here is um, the uh, battery pack. Uh, it, this version doesn't come with the micro bit, so you'll need to get a micro bit go pack as well uh, to match with this, but what's cool is as you move it around, it makes cool sounds. So maybe I'll do it over here. So it's kind of a neat. Uh, do you want to go to the um, okay. As you move it, it makes kind of cool, bleepy, like chip tune synth tone effects. Um, and it's all written in block based programming. So for younger people, they might just want to build this and play around and make cool sounds as you tilt and move your hands. You can be like Imogen Heap. Uh, but if you are a more um, advanced, uh, you know, older kid or student, you can look at the code and adapt it 
um, to update it. For example, you know, this is a speaker, but the microbit has a, a built-in Bluetooth radio. So you could have this as you, you know, move your arm around. It sends Bluetooth signals to your tablet or your phone um, to control something on the screen or send, you know, MIDI commands or something. Um, so I think it's kind of a neat project. It's a great first wearable project for kids. And again, there's no sewing, uh, there's no soldering involved, only sewing, and the sewing is pretty simple. So um, I think even kids as young as like eight can get started with this project. Or an older person who just wants to make a cool wearable, you know, wireless slash musical uh, interactive glove project. Uh, it's kind of cool. So it's a little bit different than most projects because we actually have a, a real musician who helped design this. Okay, next up. Next up, we have the enclosure for the Pi Portal. Um, people are probably wondering, like, I have this Pi Portal. How do I put it on my desk? Uh, we, it's a full acrylic uh, enclosure. You put it together, no tools required, really, other than your fingernails. And um, one neat thing that Phil B uh, designed into this is uh, there's a little slot, and you can put a roll of pennies. Because we're thinking, like, you know, you want to make it heavy so that it doesn't move around your desk too easily or tip over. Um, so this gives it a nice counterweight so you can touch things and it doesn't, like, move around too much. And, of course, put uh, bumpers on it as well. Um, but so then you can use any you know, 50 penny or 50 penny like coin, depending on where you live. Um, you don't need to use it, of course, it, it works just fine without it. It just moves around a little bit easier because it doesn't have that weight. And then, uh, you know, you have access to the button and the back is clear so you can see it. Uh, so if you're building any of our Pi Portal projects and you want like a weather station on your desk, this will do the job quite nicely. Okay. And next up, the reason for the top hat. And the top hat's really, yeah, when yeah. you do a one-frame graphic, I'm learning, a one-frame graphic with Wirecast. You know what's funny? We actually have to go back to, if we can't use GIFs, what we have to do is have embedded YouTube videos that are MP4s yeah. of GIFs. So just, yeah, I'll do that. Just imagine that the hat's in the MP4. Okay, so this is the reason, because we have the CSP32. Yes, it's actually an old uh, project that I made. It's um, a basic breakout for the ASP32. Um, called the Huzzah ESP32. We have a breakout for the AG66 and a feather, and then for the 32, we kind of went straight to the feather. But um, as I've been doing more ESP, SPI 32, you know, Wi Fi co processor stuff, I'm like, well, you know, it'd be really good to have just the chip, no USB serial converter, no battery charger. This is a very small, kind of minimal uh, ESP32 breakout. It has all the pins broken out. Uh, has a power regulator on it, two buttons for GPIO zero and reset and an LED. You can program with an FTDI cable um, and it's, it comes pre-programmed with the ESP32 SPI coprocessor code. So if you want to use this with a CircuitPython board or Arduino code as a Wi-Fi coprocessor, it'll do that out of the box, um, but you, know, you can also program it with the ES Espressif IDF or you can use the Arduino IDE. Um, but this can be minimal, right? You, you have to add your own USB serial converter chip and then, of course, you don't have to leave it in, so you can make it much smaller and lower power. Okay. And that's new products.